How's everybody doing? Uh, thanks for showing up this morning. Uh, hope you've had a good uh, three days of summit so far. Some people may have joined in a little late, but hope you're having a good time. Um, I'm Sriram Natarajan. This is uh, David Peraza. We are here from Persistent Systems to talk to you about uh, Silometer, where it is today, what you, could, what, what you could do today, what you can do tomorrow, and our thoughts on how uh, the community can adopt it. Uh, Persistent is a software powerhouse. We've been around for 24 years building software for uh, some of the biggest names, all of the biggest names in the software world. Uh, with uh, OpenStack, we've been contributing code since uh, the Cactus days. Uh, we've had a couple of signature uh, wins with uh, a few large vendors. And we've started looking at Silometer as the way to get to uh, monetization or the return of investment that people have made on uh, OpenStack. And this seems to be the way to do it. The community is matured enough. The offering is matured enough that a lot of workloads that are moving on to OpenStack have to be now justified and said, okay, now this is cool. Now what? Now what, how do I prove that this is giving me the return that I was expecting? And we think that Silometer is the answer to that uh, uh, question. So just a quick uh, show of hands here. So how many of you are running Silometer today? Great, great. Are you just using it for metering alone or anything else? Just for metering? Okay. Uh, are you uh, archiving your uh, Silometer data uh, so far that you're getting? Okay. And people that uh, are using it, uh, do you want to continue to use it? Any uh, people who have problems with it? Wow, that's great. All right, cool. That's, uh, uh, David will walk you through a little bit of uh, evolution of uh, Silometer and then how we can take bring you to the point where we are today and then what the future holds for us. David. Thanks, Jerem. Um, <clears throat> so, first of all, I want to say this is not um, you know, a depth talk on Silometer. I mean, um, if you want to get details, uh, there's great documentation on the weekend. You can contact me if you want. I c if I don't know the answer, I can point you to one of the core members, which you know, will very more likely answer whatever question. Um, this is more about, you know, showing you the evolution of Silometer and the opportunity that brings to the business, okay? And then when I say the business, I mean, um, you know, information you can get out of your um, data, your Silometer data about your cloud. And then this is information that might be relevant um, today or it might be relevant in five or 10 years, right? So because patents, you know, when, you, when you're looking for patents, patents might develop over time, not just you know, uh, instantaneous, right? So this is the opportunity we see, and then, you know, we want to then uh, dis discuss here with this audience, make it, make it a little bit interactive, if you will, and, um, you know, with, with this interaction, hopefully we get, you know, what are the things that are happening with Silometer today that we can improve so you can turn on Silometer today, okay? Turning on Silometer today means you can do analytics in the future. So even if you don't care about metering or billing, even if you don't care about monitoring, um, it's still beneficial, okay? Thank you. All right, so what was the initial idea? I mean, the initial idea is you, have, you had a gap, right? So you had um, you have compute services, network services, and, and storage services. Um, but, you know, you have different departments coming in, and, you know, the development department will come in and, you know, orchestrate, you know, make changes to orchestration, make changes to, uh, um, let's say, placement algorithm, for example. Um, the IT guys will come in and deploy uh, OpenStack. <clears throat> but then the build department is crashing their head. It's like, how do I build? You know, I, mean, the, I have to build for the services, right? So each vendor will have it, their own one-off solution. And then, you know, to measure, um, Nova has some, Nova has some, um, um, metering that was collecting just for placement reasons, right? So that was, you could use that, but not, was that, that was not enough. Um, so it was hard to port and hard to interrupt. I mean, there was no standard. That's the bottom line. So there was a need, there was a clear need, right? And then there was an incubation already out on, in Stackforge um, of Xilometer, um, but it wasn't yet added to OpenStack. 
Um, so this is when OpenStack is born, right? So now you have a meter and component called Silometer in the OpenStack um, set of components. You have you know storage, um, image um, management. You have um, um, compute, but now we have Silometer. Now the the initial idea is just to for billing. That was the need. That was a gap. But from the from the beginning, the design has always been. We can do more than just um, meters for billing, right? We we have this. We're gonna create this infrastructure, this pipeline, if you will, right? Where you can send messages at scale, and and you know gather all the information, all the information such as regular events or alarms, right? If you have a, an issue with your systems, you reach a threshold, you send an alarm, and then Silometer can capture that. And then you can customize it so you can um, publish that alarm somehow, right? So if you hook up to the database, you can certainly get the alarm. Um, and there's other ways, you know, after that. Silomet is just in charge of collecting that and storing it, okay? All right, so these are the initial features. You have, um, so you have, remember back then there was only Nova, um, and, and Nova had Nova, Com Nova Compute Network and Volume. So there was like compute storage and network within the same Nova component. So there was a, a big you know, need for performance there. So there was a specific compute agent that was dedicated for that. And then that compute agent, what it does is just it sends the notifications in the notification channel. and. You know, Nova was not instrumented to send messages like it is today. Today is a little bit different. Now I'll show you that. But um, then you have like a central agent, which you know was used pretty much for um, Glance, Swift, and you know, let's say network, Nova network, right? So and that was more of a pulling mechanism, uh, pulling mechanism. Right? So you go and ask for it through the APIs. So that central agent was sitting at the Silometer block, right? And, and then you have, you know, data, it was non-SQL. It was, you know, they started with MongoDB, as you know. Um, and there was a single actor and a single use case. I want to gather meters so I can add my um, rates on top of that and get billing, okay? Um, anything else? Well, I think we can move to the next chart. All right, so there was an evolution uh, through, you know, starting with Grizzly, then Havana, then Icehouse. Um, so the, the main thing here is what happened is that, you know, the, the main design um, started to evolve. Um, it, the, the design was there to accept anything else, but then, um, you know, different companies started adding their, their piece of it, right? So for example, there was, um, you know, alarms need, and then the alarms API was added um, in, in May 27, 2013, right? So, you have also um, standard auditing, the CADAF, um that came in as part of an event, a new, you know, a new type of event that will allow you to store data for auditing purposes later on, right? You have um, hardware monitoring, um, you have network monitoring. So this is sort of realizing the initial design, but um, it's just going beyond the initial gap, okay? So you, know, you see here how Multiple features cannot, multiple messages cannot be sent through that bus. Let's go to the next chart. All right. So what do you have in that bus now? You, you don't have only meters. You have meters, you have alarms, you have events. Um, and, you know, it, to be, I mean, now you have more components. So now you have to instrument more, you know, more than just Nova. Now you have, you have to take care of neutrons separately. You have to take care of synthesis separately, right? And then the good news is that most of these components have already been instrumented to send notifications. So through a common um, common code in Oslo, the Oslo project, I don't know if you're familiar with that, but um, so they can now send notifications and then these notifications convert um, into the events or meters or alarm. There's an engine, there's a collector in, in Silomer that will um, process that and stores it or do some aggregation at that point as well. So, you know, for billing, we're still doing aggregate, it's still doing aggregation, right? So, but it still, but it saves the sample as well. It, it saves the raw event 
and it saves the row alarm, which is um, pretty important for the, what's coming on next, okay? So um, one thing I wanna mention here too is uh, that there's been a, a great feature that was added um, for auto scaling that you know, I know Rackspace is, is using that. Um, so it's pretty much you know, um, alarms being sent and then th through Silometer and then heat is actually um, responding to those alarms and you know, auto scaling based on those alarms, okay? So there's, a, there's templates to go scale up and scale, scale, and scale down and then it's acting upon it, right? So this is adding, you know, it's getting to a point where we, you know, if you go, if you're in a private cloud, you do an open stack, you can do similar things that Amazon is doing, right? So, yeah, next chart. All right, and then, so here, here's what I, it, be, it could become a little more interactive if you want. Um, so what if you turn kilometer today? You, let's say you haven't thought about it, right? You're an enterprise, um, you don't need billing, you run a private cloud for your enterprise, right? So, yes, you're gonna get some features like, you know, auditing, if, if you're, uh, you have to be in compliance with uh, some regulation, and then you, you know some auditor is going to come in. You know you you'll get that feature for free, right? Um, you can measure utilization. Um, it's it's going to be alarm driven auto scaling. You can take advantage of elasticity as well, even in your private setting, right? Um, you can do hardware monitoring. You know, is it getting too hot? Do you need to actually go and you know fix a fan in some of the hardware uh, systems? And then um, you have multiple data store options that you can play with. You have non-SQL and SQL support now. So you have a whole set of um, data stores you can play around. But even if you don't take advantage of these features, right, I argue that you turn it on just because of the analytics opportunity, okay? So and that's, that's um, by the end of the day, when we finish with this presentation, that's what I'd like you to take home. You know, even if I don't need these features, let me explore what are the analytics opportunities that I have in five years, in two years, right? And what my, you know, management team, could, the intel that my management team could be taking out of this to make smart decisions about the cloud. Do we buy new storage or not, right? Do we buy, um, do, we, do we scale out to a public cloud or not? That type of questions. You know, those are key decisions that the more, the more intel you have, the better, right? So we understand there's, um, you know, I argue that that's, that, that alone, you know, auditing alone is enough, but I understand why some people might not, you know, be turning on kilometer right now, right? So it's, they don't have an immediate need, a business need today, but and is adding extra cycles, right, to my, to my processing, right? So it's adding, you have to generate, transmit, and process new messages, and a lot of messages. It's, this is not like, you know, for, it's sending messages every time something happens, okay? So you have to think now about additional storage. So what do I do with all this data? I could fill in ter terabyte in, in no time. Um, how do I archive this? That, you know, there was a question at the beginning about archiving. Um, how do I archive this data? You know, it, that's a potential issue you could have. If you're not ready for it, then that's probably one of the reasons you're not flipping that switch, okay? And then you have additional configurations and complexity. Um, again, you don't, you don't have immediate business need and maybe you're not, um, you don't want to take care of uh, advantage of analytics, but um, so you have to weigh that, right? So is it disruptive enough in my business that I'm not gonna turn it on or can I tolerate that disruption to a point where I can gain this benefit from the analytics work and bring in, okay? So, and hopefully, I mean, if you have any questions, we can help you with that decision as well. So um, I'll, tell you about the, I'll tell you about the evolution, right? So we got from metering to now metering alarms, events, auditing, et cetera, right? So here's what I see coming on. So it just started with billing. It did um, event-driven policies now. Um, you have hardware monitoring. Maybe you can add app level monitoring. So this is some, you know, if, you, if, you, if you're here in the middle of the stack and you went down to hardware to monitor that, why not go up to um, application level and then send notifications in that way. For example, my web app is not 
uh, the throughput of my transactions are not keeping up. I want to send an alarm, right? And then hopefully someone hears that alarm and acts upon it like heat, right? And auto scale my environment just because I'm not, the app level is not receiving the throughput, right? So that's a good example of app level monitoring. But, you know, the, the big thing that's coming on is you have a lot of data for your cloud on all fronts. So big data analytics becomes something that you can do in the future. So it's, Silometer becomes, yes, a tool for today, but also the data of Silometer becomes the data of the future. Okay? So I think um, I'm going to let Trium go through the actual analytics opportunity here. Sure. Uh, so we have the capability to connect, uh, collect events, alarms, and notifications f uh, through Silometer. So, uh, he was talking about applications that are onboarded onto OpenStack. We recommend that uh, when you're integrating such applications, what typically notifications you write, don't try to carry on the old, to just carry on the old uh, mechanisms back into the new world of OpenStack. You can switch it over to Silometer so everything kind of flows through one place so you can capture uh, this thing. This comes from experience because we run a, a large-ish OpenStack uh, instance ourselves and we're kind of calcified in the old ways uh, before the pre kilometer days and we, we found it difficult to uh, move it here. Uh, one thing that uh, you can do with the data immediately is that you can see the inefficiencies. So things like unused VMs, um, the auto scale to match up to uh, in incoming demand, that's something that you can automatically do. You can also uh, either if it's a tenant that's your in-house tenants, you can actually understand what they're up to and get to know. and. Uh, uh, give them suggestions on how better they can run their workload, both from an effect, um, efficiency and effectiveness uh, to a, a probably more innovative solutions that you can suggest. Probably if they are, uh, if you find some complementary uh, workload, some things that work in the morning and some things that work in the afternoon, and they never kind of seem to overlap and they you seem to use the same database, might as well tell them you can, here's a suggestion, probably you can merge them if, uh, if the rules apply. You can also do things like uh, targeted offerings. So if um, everybody seems to wake up on Monday morning and starts demanding a lot, you can ch probably charge it differently. If you're a public provider, if you're uh, in-house, you can probably provide some disincentives for people to not use it in the morning on Monday morning when everybody seems to want it or you know, so that you can stagger the load. That's something that kind of leads into uh, how you can differentiate your service. You can definitely uh, look at providing such intelligence to your consumers, either internal or external, to say, this is what you're doing, here's how I can help you do things better, and here's the data to prove it. It's not, I'm not trying to sell you new services, this is, here's the data that goes with that. And that becomes a very easy uh, argument, it becomes a very uh, sticky relationship after that, and people really love you when you save them money. Uh, and uh, when you're running large workloads, you have um, the uh, on um, mature systems, you have uh, the compliance and regulatory rigor that you have to stand up to. Uh, there are systems that you probably have in place for existing workloads that monitor and provide your GRC uh, mechanisms for that. Uh, what Silometer can do is be the collection point for your entire OpenStack uh, system. So don't bring over things which talk directly and kind of uh, eclipse uh, uh, the Silometer path. Because if you have things going in Silometer, there's one single point where you can capture the data, where you can analyze it and um, be sure that anything that's running in your OpenStack system is going to go through this way. So you, you have that uh, and you can make it transparent enough and you can stand up to any audit scrutiny that you may face. Uh, and then we have the usual uh, uh, capability prediction, uh, capacity predictions that we can do. We can uh, uh, kind of give you, uh, here's where you're going to run out of a tenant level for your uh, zone level or your entire org level. You can say, here's when you're going to run out of capacity, here's what you'll need, here are your special services that you may want to bring in. Uh, here are your bottlenecks, you may want to uh, put in a bigger pipe between these uh, places if need be. So those are the sort of things that you could do. So this is um, kind of what uh, we talked about. There are certain things that uh, uh, we can also look at. Uh, you can see if you're ready for uh, uh, disaster recovery. Uh, 
that's something that uh, is gain, gaining interest in the open stack space. Yesterday, we have our colleague talked about one possible scenario. There is a working group that David is working with to see uh, how disaster recovery plays in and how you can utilize probably multiple zones in a uh, open stack uh, environment uh, to probably have uh, backup images here and start it up in a separate place. Those sort of things can happen if you have the alarms in place, that monitoring in place that let you know that you actually have a problem. Uh, you also have, um, there are certain things like uh, security problems that uh, can, uh, that you can look at. So once you have some standardized data, you know that your applications are gonna do these things, you're gonna start up a few VMs, uh, and it's easier to draw a baseline once you have a data. And once there is an anomalous behavior, you know that there's something wrong going on, and that can be flagged, and you can have that as your early warning system as something going wrong, in addition to your other IDS and IPS solutions. Uh, go on. Go on, David. All right. So just like, uh, uh, this is a chart I think we borrowed from uh, some financial planning <laughs> uh, site. Uh, what we want to impress upon you is that even though you don't have the need today, you're going to have the need tomorrow for uh, uh, Silometer data. So we'd like you to uh, take a really good look at what Silometer offers you today. And it's pretty valuable uh, as it stands. But the data it collects, the tools are going to get better to analyze them. Uh, uh, David would say two years, I would argue uh, even much less than that. Uh, in a matter of months, you'll have better integration between Silometer and the rest of the uh, best of breed solutions that we have. In fact, we are working on a couple of those. Uh, we'll also have the ability to understand, uh, throw more analytics at it to see uh, how we can predict uh, to, to actually identify the patterns that exist today. So you can ask if this pattern exists. And so we can actually do that, and in the future, what we see is uh, the machine learning and analytics systems will all automatically start learning these patterns and start generating information to you, saying that this is what I see, uh, and you better be prepared for it. This is something that uh, can happen, and that will only happen if you turn on your accelerometer today. David? Uh, yep. So, um, so. One of the challenges that come with this, I touched with this already, but you know, I, I make it really simple to see if you know you guys can memorize it and you know take it home with you, right? So Venn diagram. So volume, scalability, performance, and the business impact today, right? So you have to worry about the um, you know the volume of data that you're getting now. Okay. We have a reference architecture we want to show you that will alleviate that. Okay. So you have to be able to scale. Um, you know, if there's scalability issues. I suggest you know you guys bring that up uh, in the community. Um, you can you can uh, we have emails that you can contact for that. Okay, so you know what's your business impact today? If you turn it on today, does it impact your revenue? I mean, don't turn it on, right? So that's I mean you you have to make smart business decisions. Does it impact your business today? How much how much how much of the risk you're willing to take today so you can gain in the future? So be smart about that. So what are the solutions that we propose to you know, um, address these challenges? Um, so design for minimum impact to um, daily operations. Uh, for example, if, I mean, you have control. Even though you don't write, let's say you're a user, you don't write Xilometer code, you have control when you deploy Xilometer. You know, where do you deploy it? Um, what network infrastructure you're putting around it, right? What storage attachment you have on, on that? So, for example, don't run Xilometer where, where Nova controllers are running. That doesn't make any sense. You know, run Xilometer off you know, to a site. And uh, Xilometer, after all, is a Linux service. You can change priorities on that Linux service. You know, and then have it run you know, with lower priority and other more you know, high priority processes. So take advantage of your knowledge of operating system. I mean, this is yet running in an operating system at the end. Okay. So um, what's your archiving strategy? Um, you know, um, you might ask, you, you know, if you let that database grow, obviously you have more you know, impact to your business. I mean, if your data is too big, then when you query the data for billing this month, right, 
if you don't archive that, you're going to have a performance problem, right? So, you know, measure what's the data you need today for your business operation for billing and auditing. I mean, um, not auditing, but business um, billing and, and monitoring. And then after that, you have to archive the rest. I mean, you don't need that in the same database, right? So um, this becomes more of an input to a data warehouse, which is a different world. I mean, you know, in, in, in OpenStack, we talk about um, infrastructure as a service, right? But there's no reason why this is not connected to the other, you know, big you know, topic in, in computing today, which is data warehousing and analytics, okay? Um, allow for portability, you know, allow for Silometer to, you know, be moved to another, you know, more expensive maybe hardware that actually, you know, if you're doing well, if you see Silometer working for you, you know, you know, and then you want to take advantage and sp spend a little bit more money, then you take it to better hardware, right? You take it to more scalable hardware. Uh, so, but always, you know, allow for that portability. And plan for long-term uh, storage. Um, so you might have, you know, a more expensive storage today being used as a backup, right? So in five years, you might have terabytes and terabytes of data, you know, think about cheaper storage. You can store this and bring it in only, you know, when the analytics tools requires it, okay? And then with that, um, I'm gonna take you through the you know, reference architecture. So it's, you know, think of Silometer the same way. You have notifications, you have API, um, you know, polling um, coming in. You have now SQL, non-SQL storage. That's your database, um, that's the database here, but then you, through archiving, so the arch archiving architecture is the one that's gonna bring in all the data into, um, you know, we suggest, for example, a Hadoop cluster, right? And then the, the HDFS file system in Hadoop that allows you to store, you know, massive amount of data in parallel. And then you can then use analytics tools uh, like Mahout, um, Gate Revolution, you know, to mention one of the popular open source ones that we're using out there. And, you know, Persistent is actually, excuse me, Persistent is actually using and suggesting to our clients. And you can go to the big, you know, big guys like, you know, Teradata, Netisa, um, um, which is actually an IBM product now. Um, you know, then, you know, from, from those analytics tools, think about those analytics tools fitting into a more structured SQL database. Um, it could be any uh, relational database that you can think of. And then, then think of the, you know, the other end. Now you have a director, your director in your company, or your VP, or your, you know, any other executive. Make, you know, getting notifications and getting, you know, insight about the, the cloud. How is it working, right? And you have the, the director making if queries. You see, what if I had um, more storage? You know, how would this behave? You know, what if um, my network cars were 10 gigabits instead of one gigabit. You know, let's make that question and see what, what do I get, right? So, you know, a couple things happen in here, right? So you're offloading, like I said, your data to a more containable environment where it's built for this big data, right? And um, you add in daily intelligence to your organization. Now, again, don't expect the intelligence to be, you know, uh, of the highest value day two, right? Because some of these analytics tools need patterns over time to recognize there's something going on and let you know, right? So it, it'll only get better after that, right? So the intelligence you'll get is gonna be better and better and better. And like I said, if you keep switching, so you keep the same architecture, but you keep switching, switching the brain, you know, the analytics tool here, I wish I had a pointer. Um, so if you keep switching that intelligence to more advanced, you know, let's say cognitive systems, I mean, you heard about Watson, what it's doing in IBM, you know, similar things will come from other companies. And what happened here is not only you're using the data that you have in your data center, now you're using the data of the world with the data in the data center, right? So it's, this is like humans really think, right? So we don't, we don't just make um, logic out of, you know, the, the information that's coming in, we use our knowledge, right? We use our knowledge 
and the new information coming in to make decisions and to uh, take steps, right? So with that, um, you know, hopefully we convince you to turn on the button, right? Um, you know, I, I would like to hear from you why or why not um, the button is pushed. And, you know, you can go through the OpenStack mail, regular mailing list or the development mailing list. Make sure you put Silometer so we can catch um, that traffic as being Silometer questions. And then um, either ourselves or, you know, someone in the community will, will be able to address those. Um, so thank you. And, you know, we'll leave you, we'll let you, you know, go for questions now. Here's our information if, in, if you want to contact us. Any questions, go to the microphone, please. Yes. Uh, real quick, I know you mentioned one of the uh, analytics tools that you had recommended. Could yeah. you repeat that one? The yeah, open go source back. Go back. analytics tool? Yeah, absolutely. So you have Mahout. Mahout, M-A-H-O-O-T. Yep, o -U -T. all right. Gate. O-U-T. 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 Gate and Revolution Analytics. Revolution is, is, is known more of R, just R. <laughs> And then so, you had also mentioned uh, auditing tools. Do you have a recommendation for certain auditing tools that integrate well with Solometer? Well, no, what I mentioned on Solometer is um, the standard that's been used. I, I, don't re I can't recommend auditing tools. That's not what I've been looking at. But there's a standard called CADAF. Actually, IBM came up with that too. And um, it's been supported now through um, the um, standards body. And you know, it's, it's just a way to annotate your events so you can know the, you know the who, how, when, right, of when something happened. And then that data alone could be fed into then auditing tool. And e easily you can make, you know, recognitions, you know, this guy did this in that time, right? So that's, that's what we have so far in Solometer. I haven't, haven't seen any specific auditing tool on that. Thanks for your questions. So how much bandwidth does Solometer use and how much that's a, you need for each yeah, that's a good question. I, I heard about, you know, terabytes in week, right? So that's quite a bit. So, and then, um, yes, it's going to have a load in your bandwidth. I don't have the exact number. Uh, we haven't done that performance analysis. Um, now we're, again, we're here to promote using Silometer so that we can use the analytics tools that, if, you know, our company does. That, that's one of the things that we do, right? So we work with customers to uh, get analytics going for their enterprise. So what we're saying is this, this opportunity, um, what I'd like to do is invite you, the audience, to actually you know, help us with that performance. You know, the more data we get on performance and bandwidth, um, then the better we can feedback as users to, to the Silometer team and you know, get that conversation going with new blueprints and even you know, try to contribute, right? Is there a configurability in the Solometer that's probably, can you turn it down? Yeah. Uh, you mean uh, to volume, dial it up or down? Dial it up or down, that's probably what you're asking for, right? So, uh, well, you can by, by disabling functionality, right? But can you tell it to collect metrics every 15 seconds? Oh, absolutely, absolutely, yes, absolutely. You can tweak that, yeah, absolutely. The, the sampling is whatever you want, right? That, that's right. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Right, good question, sir. Yes. Um, the question from my is like, how do you correlate the data from the metrics or the metering data from various services, right? So if you have multiple Nova compute instances, everything would be running with different time zones or different time instances. How do you correlate all this data? So, um, UTC. go ahead. Yeah, I, I think it's all UTC. It's, so you yeah, it's all UTC it. now, so everything is the same time. So, so you, you sync it to a clock? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you so need to sync your clock. Right. Yeah, but I mean, that's, that's, you can correlate on time, based on time, right? So, but Silomino does a pretty good job tagging, you know, each of the, you know, every, every event. If you look at the event, this description, you know, you, you notice that it has a, you know, IDs, it has a timestamp, it has, um, you know, what, what it comes from or what it's going, you know. So it's, 
it's pretty standard. I mean, I, I, I like the way they come up with, um, um, you know, annotations on the event to, you know, let you correlate things. So um, does that yeah. help you? Okay. So uh, I invite you to go to the Silometer page and look at the um, actual format of the event. Okay. Hi, I'm looking at the slide and I'm wondering, is this to exemplify the extension of capabilities or, uh, or do you really think that uh, the analytics capabilities will be outside the APIs because that's very I, uncommon I think so. to OpenStack services? Yeah, I think it's, it's completely separate. We don't have to have like the analytics component in, in OpenStack. I think just, just the fact that you have a database the Silometer stores everything, right? And that you can just grab from that and use it as an input to um, data warehouse environments. There's already plenty of technology out there for data warehousing. I mean, what I'm showing you here is, a, is an open source, you know, a little bit more open architecture, but there's plenty of solutions out there where you get an input from a database and fit it into your data warehouse and then you run analytics under data warehouse. So and things that cannot be done through the API. You mean the, the OpenStack API? Yeah. Yeah, no, no. I, I wouldn't recommend doing analytics through the OpenStack API. That would definitely load um, OpenStack too much. So you need to offload that data and do that analysis offline completely. No, what I mean is okay. to get the analytics with the tools that you show through the Silometer API to get yeah, it in. Yeah, so that goes to my point of on, on, on you know, your data store getting too big, right? So if, yes, you could do that if you let all your data sit on the store. For example, the support for HBase on, on, on Silometer, which gives you the opportunity to spread your data even on the Silometer context. You're not in a you know, data archiving scenario at that point. So if you want to go that way, then yes, and you're willing to pay the penalty for having that data and you don't, and not having the indexes that you need, then sure, you can use the, the APIs. But our recommendation based on our experience is, you know, use the super fast database that you need for your business today so you can query billing, you know, for the month, right? But at the same time, offload this data to a, a warehouse where tools can run and they're not affecting open stack operations at all, right? So, thank you. Good question, sir. Uh, two questions. Absolutely. Was this a Greenfield implementation or did you replace another tool with this? Yeah, and this is a forward looking, you know, reference architecture. So this is not something that we've implemented. We have analytics tooling that follows this reference architecture, okay? Okay, so, so in, in the rest of your enterprise, is there another tool that they're using and if so, do you integrate with it? No, this, I mean, we recommend this reference architecture without the top, right? Without the silometer part, we recommend this to our clients, okay? And we have implemented solutions like this with our clients. Right. Now, the argument that I'm making is there's no reason why we could not just um, use this implementation just, you know, for your, you know, CRM data, just with your CRM data or your enterprise data. You can also now, if you're using cloud as a way to automate your infrastructure, you can also use the cloud infrastructure data to feed in this analytics um, machine, if you will, right? Okay. So, Thank you. yeah, you're welcome. All right. You're welcome to um, ask you know, any other questions through email if something comes up. Um, thank you for coming, right? All right, thank you so much.